Welcome, I'm Harald Sack. And I'm Sascha Bruns. And this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number two, basic knowledge graph infrastructure. In this last section of the lecture, we will talk about logical inference with RDFS. Okay, let's recapitulate. When we have introduced RDFS, I showed you exactly this example where we had here Spock, origin is planet Vulcan. And the problem there was that we had simple URIs with no meaning attached to it. So that was simply a graph where two URIs were somehow to be connected and we had the need to bring in more semantic expressivity. And we did this with the help of RDFS, so we created new models. And um, the fancy thing about that was exactly these RDF new properties that we have introduced, like for example subclass of or RDF type, they have a specific formal semantics which was grounded in formal logics. And exactly this formal logic we can of course exploit to draw conclusions, which means to make then implicitly available knowledge explicit. And how this is going to work with RDFS we, are, we will show you in a bit. But before we are going to do that, of course, we first need a few definitions. Sure. So, um, there are two terms that are you often used quite interchangeably, and these terms are inference and entailment. However, they are there is a slight difference between them. First of all, entail refers to co um, conceptually to what follows as consequence. Um, let's make some example. When a person says that he is or she is an only child, it entails information that the person doesn't have any siblings. On the contrary, infer refers to a process of computing entailment and is very similar to reason or reasoning. Just to uh, come back to example, um, if, um, if there are two, uh, let's say there are two sentences. All students are smart and Mark is a student. What kind of information can we infer? What kind of new knowledge can we infer? Of course, that Mark is, a, is smart as well. Um, there are three types of reasoning there. First of all, there is a deductive reasoning that involves applying rules of a premises to derive conclusions. And this kind of reasoning is a main subject of logic. There is also in inductive reasoning and it involves learning patterns from lots of examples and is the main subject of machine learning. And the last one is of course the abductive reasoning that involves der uh, deriving a likely explanation for an, for an observation it when based on a rule. In this course we are talking about formal logics. So of course when we refer to reasoning we will be talking about deductive reasoning. And we are going back to RDFS semantics. Okay, as already said um, RDFS by definition and in contrast to other data definition languages is based on a formal semantics that we have given you. And formal semantics enables RDFS, so this means RDF plus RDFS, to draw valid and sound logical inferences from what we have defined. Simple example, if you see here the uh, RDF part that we have defined here, Spock is a fictional character, a fictional character is a subclass of character, birthplace is a sub-property of origin. For that we have a model theoretic semantics, meaning we have a model on what exactly this means and this model is here given in terms of formal logic and you see here that uh, Spock is element of fictional character, so fictional character this is then a class if we uh, interpret this from a set theoretical point of view. Fictional character then here is a subclass of character and birthplace here is also something like a subclass of origin. Here of course we are talking about properties, but this sign here from logics doesn't make any difference whether we are referring here to let's say unary classes or binary things which are relations that we see here. Okay, but what does that mean? Which conclusions can we draw with the help of RDFS? Let's have a look at a rather simple model here. So we have here Spock who has birthplace Vulcan and Spock is of type fictional character which is of subclass of character. So just the thing we have seen previously in Turtle. Sasha, what can we do with it? So I would say that Spock is also of type character. Let's take a look at the, uh, how we can deduct new facts from a class hierarchy. So, um, for all individuals and for classes for all individuals i and for classes c1 and c2, 
if there is uh, a triple that i is of tie c1 and there is a triple that c1 is a subclass of c2, it follows that i is also of type c2. Okay, so that means that we can infer a new triple. So we can really conclude that there is more information now available and we can make it explicit by inferencing it. Let's have a look at another example here. What we have here is, um, let me quickly change this to the pointer. We have here the property birthplace with a domain character and the range location. So somebody, some person, some character is born at a specific location and we see birthplace as a property. And then of course we have the instantiation here in a triples box birthplace is Vulcan. What can we do with it? So I would say that um, from the domain and range definition we as well can derive new facts, new triples, uh, like here. So since we have the, since we see that birthplace dom in domain has a ca uh, class character, we can assume that spoke is of type character. So let's take a look at the formal definition and we see that there are, uh, for all individuals I1 and I2 and also for classes C1 and C2 and the property P, if there is a triple that relates I1 and A2 via P and also if P in the domain has C1 and P in range has C2, we can say that um, there is also a triple where e I1 is of type C2. That's what we see here and of course the same holds for a range. We can also say that E2 is of type C2. Like this we can also see that we define to what class uh, the, our instances belong, what kind of elements they are. But Sasha, what, what is if, for example, Spock was defined to be a person previously? So that these two facts, they are not, um, they are not disjoint. Yes. So the spoke could, could be a person and a character. So that does not change anything. And the one instance can belong to multiple classes. So that means we can derive additional information that's not necessarily contradicting. Yeah. So to be contradicting, character must be defined really then to be disjunctive mm -hmm. with the previous class. Then maybe that might yeah. lead to to an inconsistency, but. Keep in mind, this is something new what is introduced and that is not contradicting, this is an add-on. Okay, so let's have a look at our last example. Here at the bottom exactly is the same. So again, we have Spock, birthplace Vulcan and we have birthplace with a domain character and the range location. And of course, what is new here is exactly the origin, which uh, of course birthplace is a sub-property of. So birthplace is a special case of origin and origin connects anything with anything. Because, of course, not only a person can have an origin, but many things. So what can we now read from that? What can we infer? So according to the definition of the sub-property, of course, we can say that Spock's, um, Spock and Vulcan are not just connected by birthplace. Vulcan is also an origin of Spock. Let's take a look at the formal semantics together. So for all instances, I1 and I2, and for properties P1 and P2, if there is a triple that connects e I1 and I2 to P and P1 is a sub-property of P2, it follows that there is a triple that where I1 uh, is connected to I2 by, via P2. So basically we can see that um, reasoning is very helpful when we want to deduce new knowledge. We want to new add new knowledge, what hasn't been mentioned explicitly in the graph. And it's very cool and very helpful. So that, this concludes our lecture and we will see you at the excursion 2 where we will talk about ADF-A, ADF and the web.